hole. We love a, we love a hole. See what you done with the, see what you done mate. See what you done, see what they done. It's clever in it that. <laughs> no, what was it, Courtney Love? She went out with Alan Partridge. Well, no, she didn't. She did? Yeah, Steve Coogan. Yeah, Steve same difference. Said fast sounds the same. It's Alan Coogan and Steve Partridge, same man. It's the same man, isn't it? Right, so this is, where, um, this is what we're aiming for. But we're obviously, we're hoping for better than what we've got here. This is what Moody had in 96, I think. You see that? You see it? Yeah? Proper thing. That's the proper thing. That's very nice. British spec, left hand drive, 143500. That's what we've got here. But this has come from Switzerland. Before school, really, if I'm being like 12, I was working, I was working on Scania's. And that was, this was the Rolls Royce at the time, the 143. There was a load of 143 450s about, but not many people had 143500s. This is a very, very last, it's a 96 this. This is the very last 3 Series that it was making. And anyone who knows what they're looking at, I'll know what that is without, without me telling you. But that's, um, you see, you see, like my dad would probably tell you that was the, probably the greatest engine known to man, that engine. I think I'd disagree. I don't know, like Rolls Royce, oh, they've made some good stuff. I know, but that's a Scania, that's a Scania 143 engine. That. These would be running around Europe pulling like 45 tonne, 50 tonne. Um, with a decent drive on them, they'd be doing nine or 10 to the gallon, which is good going. One, four, three, five, and with a good pilot on nine or 10 to the gallon. These things here, um, all these fancy, in, um, you know, add blue systems on them, you know, because they've, they've got to make these fancy emissions laws before they can go into production. But the worst on diesel, they're having to use more diesel to get better diesel emissions, which is madness, it's madness. I mean, like on the compression stroke, they're having to inject six times on the compression stroke. Whereas these just inject at like 10 degrees before top dead centre, they're injecting six times on the compression stroke, or five times on the compression stroke. And when it's actually going down on the power stroke, it's injecting after then. 14 litres. It's like an old pusher, you know, like the old. I mean, it's the same as them American NASCARs. They're only, they're V8s, but they're only, um, you know, they're all. They're not four valve per cylinder, they're not dual overhead camshaft, they're only pushrod engines, this is only the same. Two valves per cylinder, um, and you've got one camshaft in the bottom of the block, controls all the valves, two valves per cylinder, push rods, manual fuel pump, but it's electronically controlled manual fuel pump. 3,000 newton metres of torque, but they make maximum torque at 800 revs. Maximum torque, proper. <laughs> There's a bit of an art for shouting and a drill bit. You, know, you just put the... You need to get a point in the middle, chamfer that edge off that, that side, so the cutting edge is there, you see. You see there, look, the cutting edge is over that side, so it's miles now, so... I'll make a pig's ear of this. I'm under, I'm under pressure now, I'll do it on a... do it on a camera. Yeah, it's a blacksmith drill bit. I'll go straight, I'm on 14 mil, just put this tank bracket on here. Well, you can wipe your ass on that, that's unknowable, is it? We have a prof. <laughs> I'd rather see him bog standard, but no, no. <clears throat> Me boss, Mick, he wanted, um, he wanted fancy stacks on it, so he bought them, he bought them, and I bolted them on. But we've had a nice job, you know, all the right nuts and bolts, that's how we're doing it up. Everything we're doing with this is, um, we're doing it right, dead original. Because that's the problem with having alley wheels. If, if you've got two dissimilar metals together, you've got alley and the steel together, it always causes, it always quickens the corrosion process up. Because you've got two dissimilar metals together, you see. But look, there's 10 wheel nuts on there, and we've had all the wheel nuts off, screw two on, just by hand, and then driving around the block trying to get the wheels to crack off. Terrible, so no, no, they do look all right, but not for, not, for my, not for me. Just from the mechanic side of it, no, we don't want them. We don't want fancy lights, we don't want alley wheels. We like them nice and standard. That's the beauty of the Scania. The Scania is always, it seems to be, it is, it's the best truck to work on. I'll just, I'll just show you here. Go and have a look under the bumper. Have a look under the bumper here. I'll show you this. <clears throat> you know, like we've had all the, the brackets for these painted separately. The right split pins with the right washers, the right clips, the right nuts and bolts. You know, you're just, you know proper going to town. Proper going, I've all, all painted under here and the foam here. You see that foam? Money won't buy that. We had to go to a man that knew a man that knew someone else's man, that he knew someone, to go and get that phone there, just to keep it original. I think that's a 12 speed. That is, it's a GRS, which means gearbox, range change splitter. I don't know what the 900 bits means, but that's what it's called, a GRS 900. Gearbox, range change splitter. You know, you know how a truck gearbox works? It's like you have an epicyclic gear train going into the gearbox and an epicyclic gear going out the gearbox. So you go through 
Flip your old first gear, and then you press your splitter switch, and that gives you second gear. And then you've got a second gear while flicking the switch, and then press that switch again, that gives you third and fourth gear. And then you go third and fourth gear. It's confusing to talk about it, but that's how, yeah. Because it means you've got 12 gears. It means you've got four reverse gears, and then four crawler gears. All control to epicyclic gear trains, which is like a planetary gear system. You heard of planet, you know what a planetary gear system is? You know, you've got like the, the, annulus, the annulus, which is the outside, and then you've got the planet wheels, on the inside and the sun wheel in the middle and then locking all that together gives you a drive straight through and then engaging the epicyclic gear train because the drive in the middle the gears put from the sun wheel to the planet wheels and then that turns the annular so it gears it all down gears it all down but it's just a sort of a quicker way yeah, just like a reducing box it takes a strain of everything like these don't have them but mercedes have up reductions and they have to work through an epicyclic gear you have to sort of see one really to get the gist of how they work it's clever. I mean, these are clever gearboxes, but not in the same league as tractor gearboxes. Like, truck engines, are, like, they're in ahead of a lot of stuff, like cars and tractors and what have you, because of the technology that has to be on them for them to go into production. But the gearboxes, truck gearboxes, are nowhere near tractor gearboxes. I mean, like, then you get them massy, them massy Dyna 6s. They're 40-odd gears, those. Six clutches, 40, I think 42 speed gearboxes they are. That's mad. But the, that technology isn't really any good for a truck. You know, it's horses for courses. You know, tractors don't need big technology engines for, for their engines, but they need it in the gearboxes. You know, because if you was pulling, I don't know, say if you was pulling seven furrows or something like that, and you need to change gear in a tractor, you couldn't press the clutch and change gear because you'd instantly stop. So that's why you need an instant gear change. That's where it came from. I mean, they use it in, I mean, they'd rave, wouldn't you? You get that BMW and Porsche raving about all this fancy dual clutch technology they have. I mean, they had that in tractors 15 years ago, dual clutch technology. I mean, like now, I mean, they've got six clutches, not just two clutches, six clutches. You know, but you're hearing raving about it, aren't you? I mean, Formula One aren't using that, man, are they? But you know, like your Porsche and your BMW, who else uses that dual clutch business? Audi, wouldn't they? They'd have it written in all the adverts and all that. But no, no, they are doing it 15 years ago in tractors, mate. It was never serious. Into I'm a bit sad I'm into my lorries. That's alright, I work on them all day. I work on them all day, so I suppose it's good to be into them, isn't it?